process. But tomorrow I opted out of the practice round. I was going to ask you about that. I'll just introduce the case, and then you'll read. I'll, I'll read just the opening till we're at the address, and then I'll just turn it over to you. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I won't read the whole description for everyone. <laughs> Yeah, I think he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know we, I know we repeat it sometimes. It's like did a redesign on why he's considered the right. Okay. Before you can see it. All right. There's one other hole. I don't think he did the other one. All right. I'll call tonight's uh, planning commission meeting to order for September the 14th. Mr. Metz, if you'll call the roll, please. Sam Cornwall. Roger Daniel? Here. Greg Emmerich? Here. Jeremy Lakinas? Here. Paul Nini? Here. Todd Moore? Here. And John Langhorn? You have quorum. All right, thank you. If you would, please uh, join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, liberty, justice for all. Next on our agenda tonight is meeting minutes from August 10th. Hope everyone's had a chance to review the minutes. Any questions or revisions? Look good. Okay. All right. If we're ready, we'll, do we have a motion to accept the minutes? I'll move to accept the minutes. And a second? I'll second. Todd Moore? Yes. Paul Nini? Yes. Jeremy Lakinis? Yes. Greg Emmerich? Yes. And Roger Daniel? Yes. Okay. And next brings us to our first public hearing of the evening. Before we get started, I will swear you in, Mr. Metz. Do you swear the testimony you're about to give the board is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so I hope you got it. I do. Thank you. Okay, this is request. Um, by Roderick Thompson for conditional use to allow a wholesale retail at the property located at 521 South Brill Boulevard, Middletown. At the request of our planning director, Mr. Metz, I will not read the entire description. Uh, I know that we've been doing kind of uh, repetitiveness on that here recently, so I'll introduce the case and I'll allow you to present the other facts. Thank you. So the night before you, you have a request by Roderick Thompson for conditional use approval to allow wholesale retail at the property located at 521 South Real Boulevard. For the city of Middletown zoning map and development code, the property is located in a B2 community business district where wholesale retail is considered a conditional use that requires review and approval by the planning commission. So the property was previously used as an office space and retail. Um, as previously mentioned, the property is owned B2. Uh, this is to provide for areas of the city that will contain a wide variety of commercial and office uses to meet the needs of the city and region that require access to major arterial streets and are in close proximity to major residential neighborhoods. A little bit of a background on this. Um, wholesale retail is an establishment for the sale of merchandise to retail and service commercial uses, office uses, and institutional uses to other wholesalers. Wholesale business may also mean acting as an agent or broker in the buying or selling of merchandise, but not selling to the general public. Not selling to the general public is what separates traditional retail versus wholesale retail. Um, not, not being open, not having um, any hours of operation. So retail and service commercial uses is the establishment primarily engaged in the sale of goods and materials to the general public. Retail commercial uses may include, but are not limited to, Bookstores, antique stores, convenience stores, bakeries, grocery stores, and other similar uses. The Middletown Master Plan specifically designates the future land use of this property as a neighborhood mixed use, which is small scale commercial office medical and service uses, essentially what it is and what it has been. Um, as you can see here on this map um, within the B2, wholesale would have to be, um, would not be, a, hold on. I was up a little bit. All right, here we go. Wholesale is by conditional use only. Um, per notice requirement, the Middletown Development Code, um, we, we provided all property owners contiguous and directly across the street 
Um, notice 10 days prior to the hearing, no comments were received, no other department comments. Um, just a little bit of background, this is on uh, the corner of Briel and I believe Grand. This is right beside the Jack's Aquarium, a little bit north of that shopping center. And um, review criteria for conditional use approval. Would you like me to read this? I can, I have no issues with it. I just don't want to end you date, okay. So decisions on a conditional use application. Mr. Metz, you, you don't have to. Oh, okay. With the board, okay. Oh. All right. Thank you. <laughs> And then that is my staff report. The applicants are here. Okay, great. Is there uh, any other questions for Mr. Metz before the public hearing? I would like to say one additional thing. So traditional retail is approved in this location. So is office space and several other uses, just not wholesale retail. And that different, the, the, what differentiates wholesale retail versus retail is not having hours of operation where the public can come in. So not allowing it to be open to the public in a shopping strip or a shopping mall. So yeah. now my staff report is done. Okay. All right. Well, at this time, I'll open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak in favor, please come up and we'll swear you in. And if you would, just for the record, state your name. If you, I can swear you both in if you'd like at the same time. And, okay. My name is James Venters. Okay, and your address? 508 Terra Oaks Drive, Middletown, Ohio. Okay, and you, sir? Okay, do you swear the testimony you're about to give the board is the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth stuff you got? I do. Thank you. Okay, well, we are looking to do an internet and, and actually uh, a long-term business out of this location. Uh, we do uh, trade shows of things of that nature. We are looking at doing internet sales out of there. We can do our shipping and everything out of there and all of our office space out of there. We are eventually, once we get uh, uh, settled there, uh, looking to uh, possibly open a couple of days a week for limited hours in actual retail. And um, our long-term goal is to be there and um, open the front end of the building for a retail set, uh, space. But right now, until we get established, um, we're doing the, you know, the whole internet thing uh, and the wholesale thing. Mind me asking what your products are? Sure. Uh, we uh, sell accessories for firearms. We don't sell any guns. We don't sell any ammo, nothing like that. It's like scopes, uh, stocks, pistol grips, slings, uh, red dot sights, things of those nature. Uh, we just bought a warehouse that was 2,600 square feet, and uh, it was full of that kind of stuff. So it's all those kind of items. So in the application itself, it talks about, uh, and, you, and you've indicated this, no firearms or am ammunition. It sounds like you are looking at this play, uh, particular property. You bought the items from the warehouse, looking for this facility to kind of uh, have a have a place to sell those items correct and then um, I know <coughs> in terms of um, it looks like there'll be no hours of operation for folks to come in and at, at least in the short term under this application is that correct at some point you plan to maybe open a retail correct yeah okay. and then so, so we intend to have uh, like again once we're established a pickup thing there where people can come in once they get their orders and actually pick them up and then as we further get established and, and set there, uh, we look to do some limited retail and then hopefully down the road, like I said, we are looking at a long-term operation. Um, I have been in the firearms industry since 76, and I've recently over the last two or three years started buying uh, closeout stuff, a lot of holsters and things of that nature. And we're doing that kind of stuff there as well. So uh, we're looking at setting this up for long term. And, and like I said, once we get established, get everything going to possibly open up some retail space there. Okay. And you don't have any high capacity magazines or bump stocks or any of that type stuff? None of that. No magazines, no ammo, no nothing that you'd consider illegal. Everything is 100% legal. Um, no tr drop in trigger groups that'll make a gun shoot like a machine gun. No, no bump stocks, nothing of that nature at all. And we don't intend to sell that kind of stuff. The other thing I would 
would say is that although we could pack things tightly into another story because, because we do this trade show, we need room to set up all particular items for each trade show venue that we want to do. And each customer base that we have, uh, for instance, we just did the trade show up in Indianapolis, will be a little bit different. So that behooves us to uh, package a particular uh, array of products for each show. We need workspace as well as uh, storage yeah. and such. It's really a, a, a working area. And this location uh, is, we've looked at a whole bunch of places. This location is ideal for us uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it's easy to get to, it's easy to get out of. Uh, you know, main roads are right there if you want to come off the highway, anything like that. It's a large enough space to contain all of our merchandise. You know, we can warehouse it there as far as uh, sell it there. All the shipping and everything will be done out of there. Um, it's close to our homes. Both of us were within like five minutes of the place. Um, again, the, the place is great for what we need it for. And the name, the name of the business itself, is it, um, I was trying to read it here. Will you have, you'll have some marketing outside location will be clearly identified for what you intend to do, or is it? I, I am working on developing a store down on Germantown Road as well. That's obviously been stalled for the last three months because uh, I've given an opinion to the store warehouse buyout. And, uh, and we look at going under missed distributors. Okay. Well, do we have any other questions at all? This <clears throat> this whole area must have been rezoned since when I was a kid, because when I was a kid, McGalpin's was there on the corner, which was all retail clothing. Albert's Supermarket was there in the middle, which was all grocery. And Myers Limited, a men's clothing store, was right next to that. And then it was a bunch of different restaurants. So Revco obviously, Drugs. what's that? Revco Drugs was right there. Yeah, and and, and there was a Hallmark card right. place there that. Breedmore was in there at one point. Yeah, there was one doctor, Dr. Peel, yeah. and one dentist, Dr. Fassler, mm -hmm. that were down the, the the hallway there in the middle of the shopping center. Yeah. But it was all retail. And a barber. So they must have outlawed retail, and now they're letting some of it back in. Is that it? <laughs> I think it's wholesale that they're outlawed. It's wholesale. It's well, it says retail wholesale. Right? Yeah. Well, that's what they're saying here, but when we looked at that table, mm -hmm. that table just listed wholesale as far as what's not allowed. So it's the wholesale part of the Whole, if, that, that we're conditionally used? I don't offer this to you, but uh, as we are quite aware over the last 20 years, the online business has gotten larger. Retailers that do not have an online presence other than food or something like that uh, have a very hard time struggling. And depending upon how specific your uh, type of uh, products are, you may outgrow the area to, to uh, grow your business. So you, you saturate the immediate market. And if you're not online, it's hard for you to expand your business. So I think that the combination retail to online and wholesale get with being able to present people with products in hand. I'm, I'm on your side. I was just trying to understand why the zoning was ever changed in 2021. It was changed? No, it wasn't changed? No. So if I could just make a point of clarification, this area has been retail for as long as that shopping center has been there. Yeah. Now the, the difference between, if you look up on the screen or you review it, um, retail and service commercial uses, um, and, and that's also in the, the future intended use of the area. Now, their type of retail is strictly wholesale, meaning that there is no interactivity with the public. If they were to only open up their, you know, and there's retail and service commercial uses is approved. So the, the type of retail that you were just listing is approved. It's where public, the public can come in 
and there's posted hours where they can come in, shop, buy, um, and leave, come and go as they want. There's not a limited, there's not a set number of hours they would have to be open. It's just whether or not they are open to the public. So if they were to be, say they're open to the public from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. every single day, that would be considered retail and service commercial uses. Um, if they were, but since they're strictly shut off from the public and they're only selling to other wholesalers or they're selling, only selling online, that is what differentiates the two. Does that make sense? Well, the, the staff analysis is what threw me off because it says Middletown Master Plan and then it lists the, the neighborhood mixed use. Is that the property, right? It doesn't um, say anything about retail. The Middletown Master Plan, the future land use of this property, which was approved in the comprehensive plan, is determined to be neighborhood mixed use. So what that means is that area and what they would like to see in that area could be a plethora of different zoning districts, but what they'd like to see in there is commercial, office, medical, and service uses that cater to their surrounding neighborhood residential um, or residential neighborhoods with secondary uses including residential. So small, small scale commercial is another term for retail. Okay. So. Makes more sense now. Yeah, so what, what it has been, has been retail. Um, what it currently is, is retail. And then what the Middletown Master Plan wants it to be is a mixture of retail and office space with medical uses. And like you stated, once we kind of get established there, uh, we are not going to do probably that retail right up front. But within a very short time, once we get established there, we do want to open it up a little bit to retail and then eventually um, block off that front part of the building and have a, a retail space there. But right now we're just in the process of we're going to have to move everything in there, yeah. sort it, you know, all that kind of stuff. And it's been empty since 2006, is that what I saw? That's yeah, that's our understanding. There's several empty spaces there. Okay. The, this eight foot grid panels, I assume that's some sort of security for the glass? Correct, yeah. Will we that be visible from outside? Security. Yeah, we talked to Milltown Security. We're gonna put up security cameras, uh, the alarm systems. Uh, he's got uh, the grid work to, you know, to do the windows, that kind of thing. Will you be able to see that when you pull in it will be on the inside of the windows, and depending upon how we do the window treatments, it may be not obvious, but uh, you know, there are techniques that are like a, a dot matrix uh, window. I talked to one of the printers over here for this, or it goes inside, so you might be able to see the shadow of those bars inside, but your, as your eye goes across, you will not immediately pick that up. Because that, that is the primary entrance as you're coming up the hill. Yeah you're going to dead end into your space, right? Yeah, you should not, yeah, like you said, you should not be able to see those okay. uh, from the, the roadway there or the parking area. In fact, sitting now, the, both the, uh, when I put my other store, the, the ATF, so they highly recommend that you not have bars on the outside. So, and I think the same goes for your insurance company, too. Mm -hmm. It becomes an attraction. Any other questions? Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Please come forward. Okay. I'll now close the public hearing and we can move to deliberation. Or Mr. Metz, do you? I'm not certain the protocol at this point. Are you making staff recommendation? I know that we've changed that for Board of Zoning and Pills. So. Yes, the development committee um, hears these cases and, and um, does still make a recommendation. Okay. 
So based on staff report provided, staff recommends denial of the conditional use for 521 South Brill Boulevard for wholesale retail. Okay. We've heard staff recommendation. Do we want to deliberate on the issue at all or? James, are you allowed to say why they are recommending denial? I, I, I'm surprised. Well, this is, um, this is the development committee that recommends it, so it's a mixture of people. Um, this area is designed for retail to be interactive with the public, and um, a retail center, whether it's whatever they call themselves, it, it's basically going to be indoor storage. They're going to block their doors off and not allow the public to enter. That seemed like the, the biggest deterrence for having this approved. Um, it's been explained if they opened for an hour a day, this would just be considered regular traditional retail and it would be approved by right. That, that was actually one of the things I was going to raise is um, if it actually goes to this, to a denial that one of the remedies here under the current zone um, for retail, even if they were open for, as you said, one hour or any kind of hours of operation, they would already meet the current zoning for this particular location. Right, that's correct. So, and um, so, um, I guess what we have to determine is whether or not we would want to allow them, you know, do we go by the recommendation or we could could ask them to resubmit if the board wanted to go that route. Yes, yeah, ask them, if I could, one more question. Sure. Your, your um, internet sales, are those going to be to individuals as well as to other retailers? Yes. So you would have, and that would be retail sales as far as I know, if you sell it to a, an ultimate user. Yeah, but not from that location. Yeah, right. So, so how long? Yeah, how long is it going to take you to organize everything, and before you do have some, an hour or a day or something? How, uh, how long do you? For You got to get it organized. You need some time to do that. I get it. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, one of the things that I was looking at here in this particular location, we certainly have had a vacancy there for a very long time. As I read the application, it looks to me like that you do have plans to have a retail space. Um, it would be nice to see something go into that location where folks would invest in that particular location. You're not selling firearms, they're just trying to, but as Mr. Metz has pointed out, we're on this zoning code challenge, whether it's wholesale or some hours of operation. Um, I mean, there's a couple different ways we could go about doing this. We can outright deny, we could place some time restriction on it for conditional use and they would have to come back after a certain period of time if they don't follow through on the um, the retail plan um, or they would have to submit if we deny resubmit at some other point if we deny the application so what do you guys think looking for or we can approve it right well, we could approve it outright yes <clears throat> once you get through this um, merchandise that you you bought what would your be your what would be your plan after that? But 
But, what, but what's the merchandise that you're thinking about buying? Is it all gun related? What's your lease? How long of a lease did you sign? I'm sorry? How long of a lease have you signed? So could we approve for one year? Is that correct, Mr. Metz? You can make any modification that you'd want on that. Um, ultimately, in two months, if they do open up to the public, then it would just be traditional retail, and, and, and then we wouldn't have this issue. Um, so it, you can make it two months. You could make it six months. You can make it a year. You could you could just outright just approve it as a conditional use and they could stay labeled wholesale retail as long as they stay at that facility. That's really up to you. And that's obviously has been going downhill for a long time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Did I see somebody in there? I actually like Roger's recommendation. We approved for a year. Yeah. I would agree to that. Do we need a motion to do that? Make a motion and we have we only, the only thing I would add to it is that you cannot see any of the bars, chain link, doors. It's got to be completely obscured because I know there are some businesses that that plaza has picked up as far as rentals go. Yeah. And I, I would think that if you pulled in the main entrance and there's chain link and bars and stuff like that, it's going to be very detrimental to everyone else in the plaza. It doesn't set a good. I love the idea. Uh, I think it's a wonderful idea. Um, I'm glad to see you guys doing that in Middletown. I just wish it wasn't directly in the entrance with protection on the front. And I do understand the protection. That would be the only thing I would add to it. We have no, I, no, no objection to even putting plywood in front of that or some other kind of a decorative thing and behind it. So when you come in, you won't see those. It'll still be there. It'll just be... Yeah, it just has to look like an urgent care with the curtains pulled or something, right. you know, so, so you just, you don't know right. that you're storing things. I don't want it to look like a storage unit with chain link in the front, because uh, that's going to give a, a, vet, a really bad vibe to that whole plaza. I agree. I would agree with that, too. I'm okay. just wondering if those roll-down doors on the inside would work better than the chain links and all Yeah, that. just something obscured to where, whatever that means, tint, curtains, shades, something to keep it obscured so at the, at the end of the year if they're if they're doing retail then they don't have to come back they would just well they would just <laughs> sorry they would just have to reapply for a new coz which would um it's a new commercial use that's a hundred dollars um and that would just be a change of use from wholesale retail to like more traditional retail I, I agree with Mr. Lukinas and others on this. I, I wanted to draw your attention to the, the criteria that we, the use criteria. One, one of the reasons why I think this is so important to have some type of screening or something there is if you look at number six, for instance, it talks about this use being harmonious at, with the, and the character of that particular area. Having the bars there, you could argue, is not necessarily harmonious with that particular area. Um, I mean, we're certainly trying to accommodate the request and allow them to open their business, but it is important, I think, to screen that in a way that looks professional, not just bars that are easily seen from the street, so. Yeah, because it has picked up in there. I mean, we go to a little grocery store there. There's a Asian restaurant there. There's a couple of things that I see people going in there for. Right. There's a, a salon, Cosmo store. So it's, there's been some new leases in there. I would just want whatever this is to bring that up, not down. We will assure you that the bars or the, the grapes, as he's called, he has a, yeah. will not be visible. All right. So we need to put that into a motion with um, a one-year uh, conditional use with the condition also for the screening. Someone like to put that into a motion. So we want a facade in the front that's harmonious with the other stores in the in the area. 
correct. And just not, just mask it over. Yeah. Yeah, we want definitely with something like that, and yeah, and we'll approve it for a year. You guys good with that? But yes. I would also like to state that window signage cannot be more than 50% of this area, so it would have to be something like curtains or something that would have to be off the window further back, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think they have to come back in a year for 100 bucks, but I think. Huh. That's a fair. Yeah. Because I, I, I don't want to get in the habit. I, I'd like where staff has been going with things. I appreciate James and the team that's been working on this stuff, so I'm trying to pay more attention to what they're saying. I know in the past it's kind of been a crapshoot, but I feel like we got a good team in place and there was probably good reason for it. Right. But I think if we mask it up into where you can't see it and they have a year plan, then it should be fine. Okay. So we'll make a, a motion to approve for a one year period with the addition of screening on the front uh, to blend it in with the surrounding areas that it must follow all sign rules, things like that. Correct. And then in a year they can come back if uh, get past the Christmas season. I'm just going to change on that. I second it. Okay. Roger Daniel? Yes. Greg Gimmerk? Yes. Jamie Lakinas? Yes. On any? Yes. Todd Moore? Yes. Guys, thanks for putting the business in the middle. I was just about to say that. Uh -huh. You have a place in Monroe, maybe? I used to. I feel like I've seen you there. Yeah. I yeah, that's it. it. Yeah, I've been in there. Yeah, and I've Probably less stress, though. Yeah. Well, very good. Yeah. Well, as Greg said, thanks for coming to Middletown. Yeah, we appreciate it. That's a big deal. Well, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, that'll move us now to case 222, a request by applicant Brandon Gunos with associated materials for an amendment to the final development plan for a change in building materials from the approved fiber cement cladding to composite cladding. And I'll let Mr. Miz carry from here. So before us, we have an amendment to a final development plan. You've seen this maybe four, five, maybe even six times. This just came through uh, Innovation Drive. Um, multiple different changes. This time it's a change in building materials, which was specifically stated in the plan development as it was approved. Um, it's the change from fiber cement cladding to composite cladding. Previously, this development plan proposal includes 21 three-story residential buildings, a clubhouse, a pool, outdoor recreational area, and walking paths. To the left-hand side over here is Atrium, and this is Innovation Drive. Changes to approved plan developments. A plan development shall be constructed and completed in accordance with the approved plan development, final development plan, and all supporting data. The plan development, final development plan, and supporting data together with all rec recorded amendments shall be binding on the applicants, their successors, grantees, assignees, and shall limit and control the use of the premises, including the internal use of buildings and structures, and the location of structures in planned unit development as set forth therein. Earlier this year, you approved this development with um, fiber cement cladding. Recently, the, uh, Brandon Gonos would like to um, apply to change that material to composite. Changes in plans relative to the size and arrangement of buildings, the layout of streets or circulation patterns, the size, configuration, and location of common sp open space, and changes in any approved elements. That was the key portion that changed it and made it become an amendment to a plan development. Minor changes I can approve by myself. Major changes such as changes in approved elements such as the fiber cement cladding. 
is what sparked it to be a major change, which is why it's before you now. Um, I've included several different slides. This was for the applicant. He would like to kind of explain to you what the difference in a composite cladding is. I checked with the appropriate channel and they said that this was fine. So, Brandon, you'll need to come up and be sworn in. And then, um, This is forward and this is back. Never have to paint it. And then there's a little platform. Oh, thank you. Okay. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, if you would, uh, please state your name and address for the record. Uh, my name is Brandon Gonner. And do you swear the testimony you're about to give the board is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so I'll be out. Thank you. Hooks together like a shingle. So, good evening. Uh, my name is Brandon Gonis. I work for Associated Materials. Uh, better known <coughs> as Alside Building Products. We are an exterior building product manufacturer based in the greater Akron, Ohio market. We've been working with Kendall Property Group, and I, Austin does apologize that he cannot be here due to some scheduling conflicts, but he asked me to come in for uh, representing the manufacturer just to get, educate you all on the change and what value composite cladding brings to the table in lieu of fiber cement. I understand most of the property is brick, but where the property does plan to have fiber cement cladding, they intend to use composite cladding instead. Same aesthetic, just more sustainability and value to the property and their investment into that property with longevity and durability. I'll kind of break that down a little bit. Get some background on us. We are a pushing $2 billion exterior product manufacturer. Why I'm telling you this is because we manufacture and distribute cladding products. We sell to the end user, the contractor, builder, or installer. The value with that is we get a lot of feedback from them, what they like and do not like. Through our distribution, we sell a lot of products that we do not manufacture all the time. We two-step things from other manufacturers. Uh, in turn, what's very popular right now is James Hardy, Fiber Cement, Engineered Wood. Used to sell a lot of those products. A lot of negative feedback from property owners and installers with those products on the upkeep, on the hassle, on the danger. Uh, I'll kind of break that down here in a second. We took that, came out with composite cladding to give the same look as wood or fiber cement products, but with a lot more back end coverage protection and longevity for the property owner, for the investor, and for the tenants in the turn of, with water management and everything like that. And I'll kind of high level this too. Keep it at high level and you guys can ask me questions afterwards. So I kind of got into it, fiber cement engineered wood products are very popular aesthetically, right? They have the looks, they have the colors, they have a lot of the on-trend demand for curb appeal for properties, but on the back end for the people retaining the property, the property owners, the tenants, there can be a lot of issues with those products with painting, caulking, touch-up, maintenance. And if they are, ma are not maintained, a lot of bigger issues can occur to your wall system and your property with water trapping, w lack of water management, mold, mildew, I can go over that in a second too as well. So again, we're getting back to composite cladding. I'll keep it pretty high level here. There's a lot of information, but composite cladding is test to a freeze thaw durability. That's very important in comparison to fiber spent or wood products, especially here in the Midwest in a true four season market. No matter the building material, shingles, gutters, doors, windows, they will all expand and contract, right? With fiber cement and wood products, those products do, do expand and contract, but they're not allowed to. With composite cladding, the way they're installed, you leave the nail a little loose so they can wiggle on the wall. And in comparison to fiber cement, those products are called hard nailed, or say we call it the jackhammer effect. What happens to your sidewalk or concrete when you jackhammer or uh, penetrate it? It cracks and ripples, right? That same thing happens on the wall if you have wood or fiber cement siding. Over time, it wears and tears down. I'm from the Cleveland market. I know it's a little warmer down here, mm -hmm. but you all still have a true four season market down here, right? It expands, it contrasts a lot, sometimes if the, in the same day. So with that composite cladding, it's not going to wear and tear at all compared to fiber spent and wood products, which in turn requires maintenance and upkeep, which adds a lot of cost wear and tear to the exterior of properties. So also too, a big thing why a lot of property developers use fiber cement is because it's class A fire rating. It's really important for high density populated areas, mixed use, even commercial. Composite cladding does meet that with the fiberglass in the product. It is good for a class A fire rating, good for a one and two hour fire rated wall. So that code is met. Uh, also too, 
Uh, the product does meet up to 180 mile an hour wind resistance. In the Midwest, if we have those winds, we have bigger problems on our hand. That meets all building codes except for Dade County in Florida, where they have high velocity hurricane wind load requirements. Another thing too, it does meet all international building code, all residential code. Uh, we'll get into it later too. It does meet green building standard codes as well. It meets Ohio building code and was approved by the Ohio Board of Building Standards. Uh, one big value at the bottom here is the R value. Most hard lap products out there really all do not bring any insulation factor to the exterior properties. They're more so conductive. Think of in the winter time, what happens to your sidewalk or driveway? It's cold, right? In the summer, it's hot. There's no insulation value there for that property with wood or fiber cement products on them. Composite cladding bringing R value of two. Even with continuous insulation, uh, helps break that thermal bridge. On a lot of rehab projects, we get a lot of positive feedback for energy bill deduction, just for coziness of the home. The house can breathe a little better now with the product on the wall compared to hard laps before it. Uh, there's a lot of value there with that R value, even if it's only of two, it still is bringing something to the table where other products do not, whether vinyls, fiber cement, wood, you name it. So let's continue, the product is a green product. It does meet 2020 National Green Building Standard as well as 2019 California Green Building Standard. There is outside recycled material in the product. You can recycle it post life. It is a green alternative product. It meets green standards. That is big because with hard lap products, wood or fiber cement, those products you cannot recycle post life. You're taking it straight to the dump. Big value there. When being manufactured too, the scrap material gets reprocessed back into the manufacturing process, so there is no waste. So very green product in comparison to what's out in the market currently. I'll kind of combine the next two. The product's very durable. On the job site, installed on the wall, it's not going to crack, peel, chip, excuse me, crack, peel, chip, or flake. There's no paint involved, uh, which is a big value too to the property, which helps with sustainability. Don't to keep worrying about the wear and tear on the exterior of the property. And a big thing too is moisture. Most hard lap products, if you're not aware, you cannot set them in a puddle or out in the rain before you install them because they're going to absorb that moisture. Why are you going to put a cladding on your property if it can't withstand moisture, right? Uh, those products tend to absorb them. That invalidates, invalidates the install. If a manufacturer rep comes out and notices anything, they'll invalidate that. Taking a step back, Composite cladding, you can put in the puddle, you can put in mud, you can have it sit in water, it can sit up on the wall, it's not going to trap moisture on your wall, which is a huge, huge value to protecting your exterior of your property in comparison to fiber cement or wood products. Product is also termite resistant. There's a chemical called Preventol in the polystyrene backer there. It's the same chemical found in dog or cat collars. Not harm harmful to humans, I touch it every day, but you don't have to worry about bug infestation which depending on the market can be a huge, huge issue with big properties. Um, also too, a big thing we wanted to focus on is the safety. Safety for our installer, safety for our contractor. As you can see, the product's very light. For 100 square feet, a 10 by 10 squares manufacturer's measure, it's less than 75 pounds. Fiber cement or wood weighs about 230 to 300 pounds. That's four to five times the weight. So not only think about the, 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 the property and how much weight and wear and tear it's having on the property, also the laborers involved, uh, also to the tenants if something is to happen. You'd rather have a four piece of composite fall on you versus a 15 pound piece of cement, right? So we wanted to keep that in mind. It's very OSHA safe. There's no asbestos, there's no silica dust with this. There's no extra required tools or safety requirements. Installing composite cladding like you have to follow with OSHA for fiber cement and wood products. So very user friendly, very contractor friendly. Uh, last thing too, this is more so for the developer, but because of all this value with longevity and sustainability, there's a full-time warranty with this product in comparison to fiber cement or wood, because in those cases, they know you have to keep repainting and maintaining those products, which is adding a lot of cost to properties. And I'll be honest, the past five years or so, especially with COVID, a lot of property groups cannot afford that maintenance, and they'll do building by building if they can, fingers crossed. They have bigger issues internally, uh, HVAC, stuff like that they, will, they want to invest in rather than making the property look pretty. So in all reality, it's not going to be upkept as those hard lap products should. And also too, the product is not vinyl, it is not cementitious, it's fiberglass, all right? And I touched on it here too, no clocking, no, no touch up, no flashing, no sealing, any of those are required, which also helps with the longevity of it. 
as those other products require. Um, and that's pretty much my high level overview of the product and what value it brings to this property. Anything else? Oh, I, added, yeah. I added the whole entire slide deck. Okay, mm -hmm. Cool. Yes, yeah, so this last one just, oh, you did the whole thing. Okay, cool. <laughs> so actually, I went ahead and I got the mock ups for the actual project itself just to show you what our product would look like with our product on it in lieu of what there was. In all reality, we're not swapping out any aesthetic difference, it's just a different product. All right. So here is the clubhouse. Like I said, most of the property is brick, from my understanding. The colors may be different based off what selection they go forward with. This is just a few ideas of what they might look like with composite cladding on it. Here's building type one, building type two, pretty straightforward, right? Um, here are some actual real life photos. These are some projects I've worked on myself, just to give you an idea of what it looks like on the wall. Uh, it's pretty straightforward here as well. It replicates fiber cement or a wood product that we were going for. This is a duplex in Virginia. This is a multifamily, similar to the one that I, we're reviewing here today in Maryland I used to work on. Uh, this is one in Illinois, the greater Chicago market. Uh, and this one is on a townhouse in Northern Virginia. A lot of true four season markets. Uh, lastly, a lot of awards, a lot of recognition on the innovation and value this product brings to the table for contractors and builders and properties, not just here in Ohio, but all the US and Canada. Um, it is really recognized as a green product which is a big leg up for those who are choosing their exterior portfolios. A lot of bang for their buck. Uh, it's a big investment when you invest into your property with your curb appeal. So at the end of the day, if your establishment is not attractive or appealing, like you guys were talking about earlier, is gonna wanna spend their money there. So same look, just a lot more back end value for the clients who choose to use them. Lastly, that's my info. If you guys need anything else, please feel free to ask. I got, I got one question. Sir. If this stuff is so great, why didn't you design it the first time with that, with the composite? Oh, Instead I'm sorry. Cement? Yeah, so I, I, cover the mid, I cover the Midwest. Uh, I don't cover Indiana, where the developer is from. Uh, our partner that just joined that team there uh, didn't know them. He just joined our team recently. Uh, I just got around to the project earlier this year prior to the fiber cement being specified on the project, introduced this to the developer, they liked it a lot, it's keeping the same look that they planned originally, just a lot more value to them for the investment in their property. Plus it saves them 10%, right? Potentially. I mean, Potentially. it's gonna save some money up front, not a ton, but in return to the cost on the wall throughout its lifetime, it'll save a lot of money. I'm just thinking of, you know, if I was designing a building and you could cover it with something that would never have to be painted, mm -hmm. That's, and, and that's why I'm here today. <laughs> our factor. Yep. It's like a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my job is speaking with architects, developers, and large contractors to educate them on this exact reason. A lot of times, if we find plans, it's too late. We're going back to the drawing board, just like we are today. So that's why I'm here. But you work for the manufacturer, right? Yes, I do not work for Kendall. He could not make it, but he asked me to just to kind of do a high level on the but product. He doesn't work for the people that are building this. No, work. I work for the manufacturer. Yeah, if, if, uh, if I was working for them, this would be already on the building <laughs> or already in the plans. First time. First time, yep. Okay, I got you. That's You'll cool. see it more and more in the next couple of years, I promise you. Depends on how well you do selling. What's that? Depends on how well you do selling. Right, yeah, I'm trying to hope I did all right. <laughs> yeah, you're doing all right. You're doing fine. <laughs> I was going to say, by no means am I an expert when it comes to composite cladding, but mm -hmm. I did do quite a lot of research on this trying to understand the advantages and disadvantages for this particular product mm -hmm. um, and went pretty broadly uh, even looking at some architectural uh, renderings for some pretty high-end uh, mm -hmm. buildings and um, some very innovative buildings and this product was it was very much supported mm -hmm. so just share that with the group um, so I guess the main thing here is you're arguing, you know, this change, obviously there'll be some savings for the developer, but you've mentioned safety, durability, and the maintenance. I mean, um, one of the selling points that I've seen from some of my own research was if we're looking at this property being in this location for 30 years or more, this, the maintenance and the overall 
uh, stability is building, this product does seem to lend to that. So, mm -hmm. uh, from what my own work on this issue, I've I had to do quite a lot of homework to make the difference between these two products, but it does seem that it was a good product. So, um. Yeah, on the wall, you'll never know the difference. If I didn't tell you what it was, you'd tell me any brand, any big name, say James Hardy, Laura Nietzsche, you'd tell me the big, the big brand you know of. That's what we get a lot technically, too. So not sacrificing on aesthetic by any means. Any other questions? Anything else for me? I don't think so. Okay, yeah, thank you. <coughs> Thanks, Brandon. Definitely a diff difference in weight. Yeah. And I've, I've been seeing the Hardy Board stuff. We have some on South Main that people can't keep paint on. Yeah. Just can't keep it on there. Uh, and I've seen that more and more. Well, let's see. Seeing no one to speak in opposition, we'll close the public hearing. And ask for staff recommendation. Yeah. That wasn't a public hearing, right? Yes. I believe you yes. did open it. Yeah. And then just closed it now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, based on the staff report provided, staff recommends denial of the Innovation Drive Apartments Amendment to the final development plan for a change in building materials. Just a short explanation is during the preliminary development plan and then additionally at city council, it was stated, restated, and stated multiple times that it was gonna be fiber cement cladding. Um, the city would just like to, you know, and this was something that was requested by planning commission during the preliminary development plan. So this is just city, this is just development committee saying, you know, we support your, your initial desires to have it fiber cement cladding and, and that's, our stance on that was just to support you. Oh, we have staff recommendation. Any comments? Well, I, I think we, I think we should approve it ba based on the qualification of the product, based on the durability and not having to paint it, and and the R factors and the fact that all the research you did. I think that outweighs. The original recommendation to go with some other type of material. I don't. Well, because then it was vinyl, a vinyl, vinyl or, product yeah. or cement board. So of course we're going to go with the cement board. This is a different thing. I don't think that's going to buckle and twist. No, and it's, warp. It's, it's fiberglass. It's just a better. It's not, it's not vinyl. Yeah, it's right. A, it's isn't it fiberglass? I'm okay with, with yeah, I think we should approve it. But we do appreciate the support, for, honestly. Appreciate the what? The support. From staff. Oh, oh. It's Backing up our decision. Our to, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, that's important. Okay. I went back and listened to all the audio tapes. <laughs> yeah, and that, it's important. We appreciate it. But I think, I think this is an okay product. I think we have a product that we think is comparable. Yeah, I get it. Just come back in and get them. Okay. They switch their vinyl to this. So, am I hearing that we would want to approve? Is that is that what I'm hearing at the other end of the table? <laughs> yeah, I'll make a motion to approve as okay. submitted. Okay. Okay. Todd Moore? Yes. On any? Yes. Jeremy Lakinis? Yes. Greg Gimmerk? Yes. Roger Daniel? Yes. Although it, it, it felt like a piece of vinyl with styrofoam on the back. Right. Brandon, do you have a distributor down in Louisville that you use? Obviously. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, on the, but if, if you took vinyl yeah, that'd be great. and glued it completely yeah, to a piece of styrofoam, sure. I think yeah. it would still be rich. Thanks, man. 
Okay. Yeah, no, please let me know. Um, what's available in two weeks? Let me know. What's the what's the general price difference between vinyl and this stuff? About so realistically, for hundred square feet, square block, you're looking at for nitro vinyl one to one and a half dollars square foot for the siding alone. This you're looking at two to two and a half, which is similar to pre-finished fiber cement or hardy, but where you save a lot of money is install and trim. You don't have to use our trim; you can use any trim in the marketplace, whether it's PVC, vinyl, engineered wood, floral, as long as it's a receiving panel. So. A lot of value engineering. Usually in the marketplace in Midwest, uh, five to eight dollars a square foot. Install a turnkey with trim. This is the rough ballpark, which is so it's basically twice as expensive as vinyl. Yes. Uh, no, install on the wall with vinyl in this market. You're seeing high increase the lowest realistically to six bucks, seven bucks. So it's a little more, I'd say. What's that? Uh, math in my head right now. Twenty-five, thirty percent more, maybe. Well, it's giving you a lot higher in look, right? So most developers don't want to do vinyl siding if they can avoid it. I'm sorry, did you do that? Yeah. Cool. That is your question. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Cool. Paul's over there doing the math on how big his house is. <laughs> <laughs> now, my, my house is mostly brick. <laughs> I don't think I'd ever go with, I like the wood. It's old wood and it's been scraped yeah. a million times. And <laughs> I like the wood. Do you like to paint it? I don't paint it. <laughs> I pay to have a paint. I've done that about every three or four years. Okay. Um, thank you. So that brings us to older new business. Any older new business? No. Okay. Um, well, brings us to adjournment. All those in favor of adjournment? Uh, one, one, one thing I want to mention, it was, since we're approving this, and we're saying it's probably better than you know, the hardy board. The cement. Yeah, the I mean, should we at some point put this on an approved uh, materials? And that's what we're saying, this is better than that. Yeah, I would agree with that because it would give us an opportunity to say no vinyl. You got to use some other more modern building product than vinyl um, just across the board, and that makes it real easy uh brandon who's your competition in this space are there other products that that are like this not really if they are similar in makeup and look it's either a true hard lap composite extruded it's very expensive it's very hard to install there's a lot of the day of connotations that uh, fiber cement have if it's vinyl it's vinyl like there are vinyl that look like it but i've replaced a lot of them with this because it warps it doesn't have the thickness and support right once you get over a certain height and profile it's just kind of yeah. So no one right now, and just sort of jump in too, if you guys either enter tech or engineering reports for the performance of the product for your engineers to approve it, let me know and I can send you guys all that information. But I agree with you, Roger. I think right. that's... I think that's an idea. So that would be a yeah. text amendment, I guess. It would be a text amendment, yep. And then that's something that um, you yourself as planning commission could start. It would go to you and then yeah, City Council. First of all makes for a better building and vinyl. and it Equifying. helps us yeah. nix vinyl yeah because it's hard Great. when you don't have another product to recommend right it's like historic commission no you can't take your windows yeah, you out well what the, can we put back well you can't put any you have to make the leap from vinyl to to wood that's a big leap right but to make a, to make this leap wouldn't be that big or a product like it. I don't know how we would word that correctly to not be vinyl, but some other type of material. Right. Couldn't we just say composite cladding? Uh, you got a composite of Com one thing in and another. Fiberglass it composite. Composite cladding. just means a couple of things put together. I would just say no more vinyl. I I don't disagree with that. It'd be easy to the mango find it. We've had a few cities just put fiberglass composite because it makes it pretty strict just to this. It's the only one out there. Um, you're right, you can't really just say composite because composite just means a mixture. Uh, but that's what we've seen just from other cities and municipalities. That's what they've done. Is that good for you when they do that? I mean, I'm not mad about it. <laughs> right. You could just put the same composite Yeah, so, so fiberglass composite cladding. That's pretty specific. I think that's As very specific. Line. Yeah. Um, that's something I can look into um, and start the process. Right now, I don't know the exact process right off the top of my head that's for a text amendment, starting with planning commission, 
Um, but I can look into that and I can start that process for you. Thanks. And potentially the next planning commission I can have an example tax amendment that you would be able to vote for. Good suggestion, Roger. Does that work? Yeah. Yep. Because even with vinyl, I've seen people with vinyl siding. I think that's a step in the right direction. Yeah, because vinyl wears out. Across the board. Well, you could probably take vinyl and do a composite on top of cement. All right, well, that brings us to adjournment then. Uh, all, in building. all those in favor of adjournment say aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed? opposed? Okay, we are adjourned. Okay. Dismissed? We're dismissed, yes. <laughs> Meeting adjourned, huh? Meeting adjourned. Hello, Greg. Nice to see Good you. Good seeing you, Jeremy. Paul, nice seeing you, bud.